I'm Manuel Hernandez and welcome to Norwich City Centre. Hello everybody, Lewis, Norwich City Centre. I hope you're all doing well on this Saturday or whenever you happen to be watching this. I thought I'd do a, a news roundup of Norwich City kind of in the last seven days to, and, and kind of talk about what's kind of happened in Norwich because although there's not been a lot of football and although there's not been a lot of signings like there was last week when we seem to be signing everyone everyone under the sun, um, it's still been quite a busy week for Norwich City. And it'll, good to, it'll be good just to do a roundup in this video. Of course, we had the Jamal Lewis rumour coming out. We had the information when fans will be allowed back at Carrow Road. Um, and we had an update on the fixtures as well. So there's plenty to talk about in terms of the Norwich City aspect. And I'll be fortunate, I think it will be good to do a roundup in this video. Um, so I hope you do enjoy the video. I'd love to hear your thoughts down below on all the top topics discussed in this video. Um, and if you are new to Norwich City Central, please subscribe as well. Um, it will really mean a lot to me. Um, a lot of content regarding Norwich City coming your way in terms of match previews, match reviews, when the football starts. It's your next month, which is really exciting. Um, and hopefully some match day experiences. Um, it'll be slightly different, of course, but um, hopefully we can get back to get back, back to normal in terms of football, football and in the world as well. But let's talk about firstly Jamal Lewis's situation. This was a situation which happened early on in the week, and it was Jamal Lewis to Liverpool. And the truth around Jamal Lewis, the truth around the Jamal Lewis saga, as as it were, is probably not as exciting and as public as it should have been. Um, in regards to Liverpool, Liverpool made an offer for Jamal Lewis of £8 million plus £2 million in add-ons. And that was done over email. It was an informal email. Um, messed it, you know, you put through it to Stuart Webber. Stuart Webber rejected it immediately. Um, and you thought that would be the end of it. Just like a, just an inquiry, it was rejected. But no, Liverpool decided to make it public. It went out in all the national newspapers. And that really frustrated me because it then seemed like Norwich were the bad guys who were stopping Jamal Lewis from his dream move, who were apparently being entitled and arrogant with this transfer fee, which is absolutely ridiculous. But Liverpool didn't really want him. They put in a really small offer, nothing to do with phone calls, nothing to do with really contacting Jamal Lewis's agent. It was quite it was quite rude, actually, in terms of an offer. And Stuart Webber did say that kind of hurt a little, particularly after having good connections at Liverpool. Um, and that was the situation. Jamal Lewis and his agent shrugged it off. Um, that they both agreed that the fee wasn't nowhere near expected, and that was kind of the end of it, really. Um, but Liverpool decided to, decided to make the public pursuit really, really um, well. They made it really public, and that was quite annoying. It was quite infuriating, actually. Um, but Norwich City did well. We showed we can't be bullied for these type of fees, and Liverpool decided and ended up signing a left back, for, I think, from Olympiacos. So Norwich City held their ground, and that was really the truth around the Jamal Lewis situation. Liverpool didn't really want it, want him. Put in a cheeky bid for him, really cheeky actually, less than ten million pounds. We rejected it, um, and yeah, that hurt. And, and Liverpool deserved deserved what they got. Really, didn't get him. That's as simple as that. Um, and hopefully, Jamal Lewis has a really successful career at Norwich City. Um, if the offer's right, I wouldn't mind seeing Jamal Lewis go. You know, a, a move to Liverpool would perhaps be good for him, or move to another Premier League club. But of course, the the offer has to be right and there. Uh, We've got someone in Sam McCallum who can hopefully hopefully step up as well. But we'll be talking about why Norwich City need as many players fit and possible um, for this championship season. But let's quickly move to the fan situation first. Um, ben Kenzel came out and, and there was, a, there was a, a really important discussion about how many fans would be allowed back. Of course, as it stands, um, fans, and ch fans will be allowed in football stadiums around October time, which is really good to see. Um, but obviously, everyone's going to have to be socially distanced. People have to go in bubbles. And football's probably not going to be the same again for a long while. So the talk is there could be up to 6,000 fans at Carrow Road Games. If you have a season ticket, you'll be able to pick the games you want. And if you if you can't, if, if you pick a game and you can't go, you could be offered an alternative and you'll get a rebate. So no matter what season ticket holders, if you don't go to a game, you'll get that value back in terms of next season. But 6,000 fans, that's, that, that, that's a good number. Um, I was never expecting, you know, fans to come, you know, Cairo to be bouncing back with 27,000 fans. Again, that's just physically not possible in the situation we're in now. But that's a good number. Look, for League Cup games, Norris, Norris City is such a big club with a fantastic fan base. Well, we're really hot, great fans. And um, look, for League Cup games, we'd get around ten to 15,000. So 6,000, it's going to feel very quiet, Cairo Road. Um, it's going to feel very different, but, you know, it's, it's a start. And hopefully, you know, we can get back to Cairo Road sooner rather than later. Um, and there's going to be some fixture carnage as well. Um, the fixtures came out recently in terms of um, what they're going to do in regards to the Carabao Cup and the EFL. And for the Carabao Cup, as always, they're going to be one-legged ties. For the FA Cup coming in January, they're also going to be one-legged ties, which you could argue 
um, is a good thing, less fixture, fixture congestion, but also a bad thing that, you know, some of the small clubs, smaller clubs won't get as much money and they need as much money as possible. But talking about the Carabao Cup, the first four rounds are all going to be in September. And as you can see from the fixtures, that is going to be absolutely mayhem. Norwich City could start on, on the 5th of September, although there's talk because that's in the international break. And that could even be moved back to the 29th of August. So we could see a Norwich City game this month. Um, but yeah, as you can see, so many fixtures. It's going to be absolutely carnage in terms of fixtures. And that is why the team who's going to win the championship, the team who's going to get out of the championship, is simply going to have a fixed squad, a big squad with quality. And that's what Norwich City need. I look at the squad, particularly in midfield. Um, I think we've got enough central defence midfielders, enough you know, centre midfielders in a way. You could always have maybe one or two additions. In attacking areas, we've got you know, three, four or five, five wingers, three left wingers, three right wingers, a few cams. So in midfield, we look like we've got a lot of options, which is great. Defensively, I still worry. Four centre-backs, a couple of whom are injury-prone. Um, and then the right-back situation, of course, Matt Clarence has been linked with a move, out, move elsewhere. And the latest situation regarding Sam Byron is that he's injured um, and he's going to need some surgery, so he's going to miss the start of the se start of the season, and that just shows that you know if you have a few injuries in your squad, you know a few injuries in, in, in fullback situations, maybe a few injuries in or, or, you know in the centre midfield, central defensive midfield, then suddenly you become really vulnerable. And look, forty six games in the championship season, championship games are always mayhem. It's pretty much three games a week, but with the added addition, when you think that now. Um, Football normally starts around now. We're going to have to wait an extra month. So players are going to lose out on a month. And also with all the Carabao uh, Cup fixtures to come as well. There's going to be so much football. It's going to be absolutely ridiculous. It's pretty much going to be three games a week from now till December, I'd say. And it's going to be absolutely mayhem. So that is why you need a fixed squad, a good squad. And I look at the Norwich City squad and you know, we've got a lot of quality, as I was talking about, in attacking areas. Central defensive midfield, we've got... Um, Tetty, Melvin City, Jacob Sorensen, Tom Tribal, and, and, and alongside them you've got Kenny McLean, Mario Ranjic, Lucas Rook, Mo Leitner. So maybe if you lose the likes of a Mo Leitner, Tom Tribal, we could get another ball playing centre midfielder in there. But we, we, we really need a lot of squad depth, and I think we've probably got enough squad depth in midfield, but maybe you could look at the defensive situation as we do need to sign another centre back, uh, centre back, and things like that. But yeah. That's kind of summing up what's happened for Norwich City um, this week. Next week, we should hear more from the uh, in regards to the fixtures and who Norwich City are going to play. Um, we could potentially sell a player, you never know. But really, I'd love to see Norwich City sign some players again. Sign the likes of, I don't know, Ben Gibson, who we're linked with, and, and hopefully have a productive a productive week. Um, but yeah, that's all the latest. But talking about Jamal Lewis, Liverpool putting an insulting offer in and another reason to hate Liverpool if you don't hate them already. Um, talking about the fan situation, it's great to hear that you know there's going to be up to six thousand fans in Carrow Road can start to have some life and some character again because football is nothing without the fans, and there's going to be some fixture carnage in the championship. So stay subscribed to Norwich City Central, and um, for match reviews, match previews, and hopefully some match day experiences. And uh, yeah, it's going to be carnage. Football's not going to be the same again. But to finish up on, football is nothing f without the fans. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.